Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Efficient Practice Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Evelyn Samuel, and boy, have I got a treat for you today. So if you're listening in, you're going to want to stay in and listen to the entire episode because I have on the show today one of my favorite people in the dental uh, industry now, Dr. William Blatchford or Dr. Bill Blatchford. Welcome to the show, Dr. Blatchford. Thank you. Happy to be here. I'm so happy that you are here. I'm I'm so excited. I hope I can kind of temper my excitement, but I just absolutely think the world of uh, Dr. Blatchford or Bill. And so that will come through today. And there's going to be all these pearls of wisdom uh, that you will hear if you're listening to the show. But before we dive deep into your interview, I want to say, if you all have not joined, please join our free Facebook group. It's called the Efficiency Now Network. There are a bunch of experts like Dr. Blatchford uh, and other business people who are in there. We'll help, we're all helping each other to have uh, more efficient dental practices or use efficient practices to run whatever business we have better. And also, if you haven't, please subscribe to the show. It's called the Efficient Practice Podcast. Subscribe to, rate, and review. So now, once again, we're going to welcome Dr. Blatchford to the show. And I am going to talk a little bit about him. I'm going to tell you a little bit about his background if you don't know who he is. And I'm certain that most of you do. But if you do not, uh, Dr. Blatchford is one of the strongest voices in dentistry today for profitability with special emphasis on increased case acceptance. He is a dentist advocate for more net return, more time away, and increased enjoyment of life. He, along with his daughter, Dr. Christina Blatchford, have helped thousands of doctors to achieve practice success. Dr. Blatchford is the author of many dental books. He has also co-authored two books with his daughter, Dr. Christina Blatchford. The newest book is titled Seven Principles of Highly Profitable Dentists. He also produces the popular weekly video series, Mornings with Blatchford. The Blatchfords emphasize that life is a banquet and they participate in traveling the world, flying, boating, diving, skiing, hunting, fishing, and cycling. Currently, Blatchford Solutions quote coaches approximately 50 dentists per year to enjoy a new level of success in their life and their practice. So I'm going to say, this is so true. I know Bill personally. Uh, Bill was my coach. Uh, I was a coach of Blatchford Solutions. And um, uh, Bill, you probably don't know how uh, you came to be my coach at that point. Uh, But for those of you who are listening, I've used coaches in the past. uh, And Bill's philosophy on on life uh, and on practice, um, efficiency, profitability, was what attracted to me. And I initially saw you speaking at the AACD in Atlanta, okay. and you were on that stage, and I said, I want to work with him someday, and I did. So anyway, we're going to get into that. Uh, we'll, we'll touch upon some points, but welcome again, Dr. Blatchford, to the show. Thank you. That's going to be fun. Thank you for being here, and I'd like to ask you, because you've done so many great things, um, and the listeners are going to hear this. I know a lot already know who you are, but what brought you what what is your journey in dentistry what brought you to the point where you are oh, it's good <laughs> Doug, as it, you, you shouldn't ask them at my age that question it's a long <laughs> journey but I, but I did get a dentistry uh, because I you know I, I grew up on a dairy farm uh, I wanted to be a veterinarian and uh, I spent some time with our veterinarian he kept telling you I'd be a dentist and uh, and so I talked to a few dentists and they said yes but but the main reason I did this is because I wanted a life See, I've always believed that life is first and what I do for a living supports that life. I have never been, and I guess that's part of growing up on a dairy farm is because a dairy farm is 365 days a year and you milk those cows twice a day and there's no time. There is no time off. And so I wanted something that would, that I enjoyed doing. I was a science nerd uh, in high school. Uh, you know, I, that's who I was and, and, and probably still am. But um, I, I enjoyed that part of it. But I also saw the lifestyle that some of the dentists I knew had, and I wanted that. And uh, and I've been married 
Carolyn for fifty for just fifty one years now, and uh, that's one hundred and two years, fifty one apiece, and uh, <laughs> it's been absolutely wonderful. And, and part of it is we've always had it's this dream of being able to do things and. Uh, we raised two daughters, Christina, you mentioned. The other one is Tiffany, who lives just a few minutes from us here with two, two young boys. And Christina has one girl. And, and our, our goal is able, raising our children to be able to travel with them, to take part in their activities, you know, go to the tennis matches, the horse shows, you know, all of that stuff, and, and be able to do that. And that's one of the reasons I got into dentistry. So I started a practice from scratch in Corvallis, Oregon, small town, uh, home of the Oregon State Beavers current national champions in baseball, third time in 10 years. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, the town had 40,000 people and 54 general dentists. Uh, and I quickly decided I really liked the business end of the dentistry. And I developed a practice that, you know, I was doing a million dollars in the mid eighties and crowns were under $300 at that time. Um, one dentist, but I also learned that I could produce a lot of dentistry and I could do it profitably or I could do it non-profitably. And I had, I had a lot, I've always had consultants. I mean, I had consultants. I think I hired my first consultant. There was a group out of Madison, Wisconsin, PBP, three months into practice. And they helped immensely. And I've had consultants the entire time I've practiced. Um, we all hit, uh, my, my latest coach has been Dan Sullivan, a strategic, strategic coach. And uh, Dan has a term I like to use. It's called the ceiling of complexity. And we, we all get to a point where we're doing everything we know, but we just, we're stuck. We hit a plateau. Right. How do you get through that next plateau? Well, you have to do something you probably don't know. You probably have to find somebody that knows something you don't know. That's hard for most of us to admit. But I found that right from the start. I, so I've always had consultants, but I've developed that practice. I did that for 20 years. Um, and then I, and kind of like you, Evelyn, I, I had people asking me, I had people coming to my office to see what I was doing. How can you produce this much dentistry? Um, we had developed some pretty good systems. Uh, I had people come to watch me work and they all, at the end of the day, we'd sit down and do a little debrief and, and, and they would all comment, you don't work any faster than I work. You don't cut preps any faster than I do. I mean, I, I had three full-time lab techs doing my, doing my crown and bridge for me. I was doing a lot of, of, of crown and bridge. And, um, and they, I said, you know, anything else. Yeah, you don't stop. In other words, I was cutting preps all day long. I was, I'm, my hands were in the patient's mouth. And I think that's a big part of it. So I really had developed this philosophy that when I work, I'm going to work. You see, I started taking, I started taking a month off in August in 1974. Actually, 1974, we took five weeks, closed the office, and we went to Alaska for five weeks. Christina was 18 months old. We were fishing, camping, and uh, we drove 6,000 miles. That's, that's one way. We took the ferry on the way up. And, uh, and I've never worked in August since. So when I work, I'm going to work. And that's part of our philosophy we teach our dentists is, you know, we divide our time into focus days. And this comes from Dan Sullivan as well our focus days, admin days, and free days. And, then, and the things that Dan Sullivan taught us was that these people that don't take vacation, they do take vacation, they take it at their desk. And for dentists, they take their vacation in their private office. You know, 20 minutes here, 15 minutes here. Well, I choose to take mine in my boat. You know, this summer we took our boat to Alaska uh, for two and a half months. But when I work, I work, but I don't, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. So we developed this whole philosophy of life, work, balance. Instead of work, life balance, life first. So designing a life that, that is rewarding and rich, and it's not about how much money you make. And one thing I've learned that almost every dentist that's listening to this is probably going to die with a pot full of money for your kids to fight over. I mean, that's going to happen. So in the meantime, what are we going to do? And I see these doctors, uh, you know, I just got off the phone with some fairly new clients and uh, their gross last year was 4.7 million, two owners. And the three months before they came to me, they hadn't taken a paycheck. But they got 35 people working for them. Wow. And, I, and within a few minutes, we sit down with these new clients and within a few minutes, I put a model together. I can show you how to each make a million dollars out of this practice million dollars a year of net income. 
Now it's going to it's going to be a different model in what they're doing now. But they've been on this treadmill. This the, this they're like a hamster in a wheel. They we need more new patients. We need more. We need more staff. And then we need more. And then and then the overhead goes up, and we got to get more patients. And so we join every PPO. So we've got to do this. And I said, whoa, whoa, let's slow down. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Because I'm not doing it to be busy. You know, I, I don't work to be busy. I, I work to be productive. And so let's take a look at this. You got, you know, they wrote off last year 35 percent of their production because of insurance reimbursement levels. Well, so out of the four and a seven million dollars they collected, they had to do roughly six million in production and pay the expenses on six million to collect four, four point five, four point seven. Well, crazy. I mean, that's why. Why would you do that to yourselves? Yeah, that's the that's the path I see so many dentists going down. So I really and I I have no model, Evelyn. Uh, I think when you worked with me. I, I was probably branded with a model of smaller practices, but we have we have offices currently that have multiple offices, uh, or I should say practices with multiple offices, multiple doctors. Uh, I have chosen to work only with owner dentists. I, I don't work with corporate dentists that are owned by credit unions and that sort of thing, you know, the bean counters. I, I won't work with them because I, I hate to see dentistry turned into a commodity like that. They did it to pharmacy, they did it to physicians, and we're next. Yes. And, and the sad part is there are so many dentists falling down that primrose path of, of the corporate model. And I, it's, you know, corporate can deliver fine care. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. They're fine dentists in the corporate world just like they're every place else. I just don't care for the model. And so, but the bottom line is, is is our whole philosophy is life is a banquet. Lick your platter clean. You see, I think there are two ways to look at life. Well, there are many ways, but I, I've divided into two. My wife and I have talked talk about this daily. You can come from abundance or you can come from scarcity. Mm -hmm. I choose abundance. And like I say, I, 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 got, I got early help on this. Uh, again, I'm gonna tell about some of my mentors. Rick Mercer, who started the Mercer Global Company way back. He was an Oregon attorney. He set up our pension plans, and, but he was really a, a self-help guru. And Carolyn and I would go down and spend the afternoon with Rick, and we'd sit there in his office, and he would just ask questions and talk. And, 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 and you know, he was the one that pointed out to us, gosh, 40 years ago, that you're going to die with a pot full of money for your kids to fight over. So I've always come from that, abut that, that position. Now, that doesn't mean that... I don't work hard, and it doesn't mean that I didn't save prudently. Um, we did, and we've ended up in, in a very nice situation. I mean, I think, first off, I'm, I'm blessed to be married to Carolyn, number one. I mean, that's the number one thing. Number two, I'm so healthy. I mean, both Carolyn and I have virtually uh, no health concerns. I, we, we work out five days a week. We, we still, uh, we, most of our vacations revolve around hiking or bicycling or skiing, or next week I'm going hunting with a bunch of uh, 40 and 50 year olds. I'm the, I'll be the oldest guy in camp by by 20 years, and uh, I'll out hike them. And uh, it's, 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 it's in the mountains in Idaho, the Rockies, and on horseback. And and you know we just got back from hiking in in uh, the Basque country in Spain for a week. Uh, you know we we hiked across England last year. We've bicycled across the United States. We you know we we spend four months in the winter in Mexico. I mean life is wonderful. So. The marriage is number one, health is number two, and we've got two wonderful daughters. And, and, I, and I plan on living to 130. Uh, and I, I just had this conversation with my doctor recently, and I said, I don't know if I will, but I want my body prepared in case I do. And, uh, and, and my accountant says, if I, if I were to quit working today, I'd, I'd be in the maximum tax bracket the rest of my life on the planet, even if I lived to 130. So I, I, you know, life has turned out beautifully, but part of it is, a big part of it is attitude. I knew it would turn out well. You know, I've always, and, and Carolyn is wonderful at this, always looking at the optim, uh, looking from the, the point of view of being the optimist instead of looking for the problems in things, look for how to solve the problem. I mean, I, I, I see, I see problems and I'm like you. I, I'm tickled to death that people have problems in their practice. It's given me a wonderful living for the last 30 years. If people didn't have problems, I wouldn't have anything to do. So, so I like it. <laughs> But I also belong to a group called Abundance 360. If you 
want to write down the name of a book, uh, Abundance by Peter Diamandis. Diamandis is a brilliant, brilliant man. He graduated from MIT simultaneously in aeronautical engineering. He wanted to be an astronaut and cellular biology because his mother wanted to be a doctor. So he graduated graduate from Harvard Medical School. He's never practiced medicine. He is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, his partners with 21 different businesses, I believe, including SpaceX and Elon Musk and a bunch of things. But he has 200 of us get together every year in Los Angeles. And, and, and we're, they're mostly angel investors and a venture capitalist. I, I am not. I, I, you know, I, that's not my, that's not my ballywick. I, I don't, but I got invited the first year and I've just always gone. But one of the things he says is that problems are simply opportunities. You know, problems are simply opportunities. They're not problems. And I, and I, I look at that and I think, see, that's coming from abundance. The, the people from scarcity are, are going to focus on the problem. Well, I'm going to look at the, what's the solution. How do we solve the problem in a way that, that, that's productive, you see? And that's what we do with dental practice is we, we take these problems, on, like, like the problem I just described. See, that's an easy problem to solve because we don't have to grow that practice. We have to trim it. We have to prune it. You know, we have to, we've got a tree, we've got an apple tree that's got a lot of fruit on it. But they can't reach most of the fruit because it's way too high. So let's prune that thing and let it get down to where they can actually harvest the fruit on that thing. So uh, that's just, that's what we do. But the whole thing, life first. So how many days do you want to have out of the office? And see, most of our clients are working anywhere from 100 to 140 days. Uh, one of my clients is on the board of, uh, the board of trustees for the American Dental Association. He's on, on a path to probably become our ADA president. And they told him, we took this position. They said, you will not be able to practice more than 160 days. Now he's been a client for 10 years and he hasn't worked 160 days in a long time. <laughs> he's between 120 and he was about 140. Now he's in 120 days a year. And we have a group we call our Big Docs Club and they're doing at least 1.6 on up to individual doctors in the 3 million range. And we had several break 3 million last year, you know, working 100 and, 130. 140 days and and so he, he's working 120 days now he's also he's attended some of my advanced leadership schools he he hiked the uh, the Inca trail with us for a week uh, he did the Hoach route which was across the, the European Alps from Chamonix to Zermatt and last spring he hiked with Cal and I across England with a group of people so we've spent a lot of time with him but the bottom line is 120 days 1.6 million life is good it is good and, <laughs> and, and we're doing that with systems, Evelyn, that don't take huge staffs. I mean, a typical staff like him, he would have, he has four people on his staff. And his staff's all bonusing nicely. Um, they're pushing him every day, uh, you know, to do same day dentistry because they know what's in it for them. Uh, when it comes time to, if someone moves or someone leaves, they're not all over him to hire somebody to replace him. They're not clamoring for more staff members because they know they have 20% of whatever they do. So in their case, I mean, let's just say, make it easy, maybe 1.5, 1.6 million, there's 320,000 for the staff. Divide it by three, four, five, six, your choice. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so they're, they're quite happy. I mean, here you have four ladies that are roughly making $80,000 a piece and they're working a three day work week and they're basically taking a week off every month and they're getting paid straight through, you see. So are they happy? Are they supporting him? I mean, a couple of years ago, he decided to learn IV sedation. Who was pushing him to learn that? The team. The team. Mm -hmm. And when he wanted people to come out and learn how to, you know, to assist in that, those new procedures, they were jumping all over it. Whereas before he would have been dragging them, you see. So they see it. So yeah, life is first, life first, and then you work around it. And a, a dentist, you, you know, I, I used to show, I mean, I, I've been doing this for what, 30, five or 40 years and when I first started a lot of doctors were working five days a week and maybe one week vacation two weeks vacation was the norm well we started out with the four-day work week and then we started suggesting a month off and then people were I noticed a, a drop in diagnosis between six and eight weeks so I said every six weeks you need a vacation and and, and now we've got these doctors that are working three days a week and that's three pay get in mind that's three patient days 
that means they still have some admin time. They maybe have a half a day where they work on their practice, and that's important. But they don't, we find when they're doing this, this schedule, they don't, we, we tell the team, you can't come to me during the hallway during, during the day and say, hey, doc, you got a minute, I got a problem. That's not allowed. The answer is, no, I don't have a minute. I'm doing dentistry today. Solve the problem yourself. If it's still a problem, put it on the schedule for next week's staff meeting. My follow-up on that is, if I have to do this, why do I pay your salary? Exactly. In other words, hire a team, hire people that are willing to take responsibility and take initiative and are curious how to do things better. You know, I mean, you, and you've got to be selective. I mean, you have to select these people that, that have the curiosity to rather than just do things the way they've always done it, let's look for a better way. Yeah, I'll give you an idea of a better way. Um, 15 years ago, I bought my first Mac computer, my first Apple computer. And if, if you bought, you've shopped at the Apple store, you go in there and, you know, you choose your computer and, and uh, how would you like to take care of that? And they take care of your, take your credit card right there at the, where you pick out the computer and, and they swipe the card and would you like the receipt emailed to you? That'd be fine. And your phone vibrates in your pocket and you've got your email receipt. And within minutes, the person shows up with your computer. Well, Nordstrom's now adopted the same thing. So about 15 years ago, we started having hygien hygienists point a sale machine right in the hygiene room, swipe to finish up their appointment. Today, your bill is this much. I can be your cashier. Patients love it. Mm -hmm. The patients was, love it. And it takes less time. The hygienist always said, we don't have time. It takes less time to do it than to walk the patient to the front counter and have them do it and stand there with your patient waiting for the person, somebody at the front to have time to take care of your patient. You just do it. You know, I just was in an office, the dental office I go to. Um, I've been going there several years ever since uh, uh, the Dr. Brad Brayman that I went to for several years. Um, my, my, my dentist who restored my mouth from 20, 20 years ago was Rice Bohr in Seattle, but for, for you know, profies and checkups, I go to somebody here close to home. And Brad Brayman, a long-term friend and client, uh, had to stop, so I stopped going there. But I went to go to another client in Bend, and, and uh, I was there just the other day. And, you know, I had my, had my profi visit finished, and, and uh, she told me how much, and, uh, and I can take care of that for you right here. And uh, so easy, you know, make your next appointment right there collect the credit card right there and you don't even have to stop at the front desk. It eliminates a big bottleneck in most offices. So simple things. How can you, how can you do this easier? And so, uh, you know, those are some things I look at. So anyway, one question and I talked all that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I mean, you, you said so, you just dropped so many pearls of wisdom and you, the things that you're saying people need to hear. I mean, you've covered a lot a lot of the things that I do today, I have to credit that to to um, coaching with you. Um, Thank like you. I said, yes, it is. It's true. I, I'd used coaches before. When I came to Blashford Solutions, my practice was doing well. That wasn't the problem. The problem was that my balance was completely out of way. Well, I'm going to tell you, I, and you, you may want to edit this, this recording later, but I remember oh. Carolyn gave you some real specific co coaching because you were single and you said, I don't even have time to go on a date with somebody. And <laughs> Carolyn told you, Evelyn, life is passing you by. You're a beautiful person. Why are you not having time to date? And, and the next thing we heard, you are getting married and now you have two children. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so true, Bill. It's so funny. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I was going to say that too. I credit you too for me finding my wonderful husband or for my yeah. wonderful husband finding me. Well, you found the husband. We pushed you. <laughs> yeah, he, actually, he actually found me, but you all made it possible that I was more visible because I was uh -huh. always in my practice. Yes. And so I remember when I flew to, to uh, Portland for the summit. And yes. We were sitting there together. It was you know, Carolyn and, and you and me. And, and I remember that conversation. And you said, you said, oh, don't worry. She's going to be fine. She'll be fine. And she was saying that she's like, oh, my dear, your, your life is passing you by. And you said, oh, Carolyn, she'll, she'll be fine. And, and true enough, I went back. Uh, something that you just said, too, about taking time off. I was not yeah. taking any time off. I was so afraid that, you know, if I took off, we still have to make the, you know, the overhead and people have to be paid and the patients aren't going to have anybody to see. And one of the assignments you all told me, you told me how many weeks to take off. And I was a little bit 
gun shy. So you said, okay, start off with four weeks. Yeah. And so I blocked the four weeks off and I was a little bit nervous because I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. And something strange happened. When we took that time off, we became more productive. Production went up, didn't it? The production went up. Everybody was uh, more creative. We were yeah. all less, you know, less stressed. The environment was better. The team, like you said, was on board because they knew what was in it for them. Mm -hmm. And so all of these principles that you just kind of yeah, mentioned. Let me, show, let me share a principle here that makes this yes. work. You see, there's a thing called capacity and demand. Capacity versus demand. And, and so many dentists get this mixed up. They think that by increasing their capacity, you will automatically increase their demand. But if you have a practice that's doing, just pick a number, say a million dollars a year, you can do that in 200 days and do $5,000 a day. Or you can do $10,000 days and do 100 days. Now, once you learn how to do $10,000 a day, why would you another five? Now, we have a, I have a client, and I have permission to use his name. His name is Josh Lute, practice up near Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And he's in my big docs club, and we spent a lot of time together. He's uh, gone on some of these trips with us. And uh, he works barely over 100 days a year, and his goal is $15,000 a day. And he said, if I can do a 15, why do three fives? Now, here's what happens. When you come back, to, see, there's a paradigm that you've got to think about here. And I think most people miss this. Vacations traditionally were handed out as reward for hard work. Now, you, you work here for a year, you'll get a week's paid vacation. I mean, that's how, the, that's how the unions did it originally. And if you work two years, you get two weeks and we'll cap it at three. And they were given out as reward. Well, what I discovered in dentistry, and, and you mentioned something about being creative, you're not creative when you're worn out. You're not ambitious when you're worn out. Um, great football coach, um, drawing a blank on his name, Green Bay Packers, um, drawing a blank on his name right now, but it doesn't matter. He said, fatigue makes cowards out of us all. Fatigue makes cowards out of us all. And Vince Lombardi was the coach's name okay. that said that. And so here's what happens. You go on a vacation, and you get out of the office and you go out and you do whatever. You may stay home. You may, you know, you may just stay home and chill out. Or you may travel someplace. You may be around the world. I called it, I tried to call all my clients on their birthday. I called one of my clients this morning and he's in Barcelona on his birthday. He's been in Barcelona the last three years on his birthday. He practices in, near Chicago. But do whatever you want on that vacation. You come back and you are fresh, you are rested, you are full of it, and you make it happen. Same for your team. Uh -huh. Then if you stay there long enough, you actually go into what we call a mechanical phase. And it looks like you are, it, it looks like you're doing everything you're, you know, for all intents and purposes, you're doing the same thing you were during that productive phase, but you know, you know, the juices just aren't flowing. It's just not as productive. And if you stay there long enough, you actually go into the burnout phase. Yes. The burnout phase symptom is I need a vacation. I need, to, I need to get out of here. I need a break. And when you hear yourself thinking that or your team saying that, you remember, you're already, now you're in the burnout phase. You've already wasted your time in the mechanical phase. It's been a long time. Since. So our goal is productive vacation. Productive vacation. Eliminate that mechanical and burnout phase. And so uh, I get teased a little bit. I mean, I... I still work, and of course people say, yeah, but you've never really worked, and, and I've always taken a lot of time off. But here's my thing, you know, yes, I, you know, I, yeah, I do, I take a lot of time off, but when I work, I, I do work. Uh, you know, it's, it's and, and, and I never see it as work, because it's fun. I mean, you know, you, you can, I mean, this is work for me. This is, this is work for me, doing this. So it, does it look like I'm, <laughs> does it look like I'm working? I don't think so. But you see, same thing for dentists. It's the same thing for dentists. What you do, dentists, is hard work. It's hard physically, it's mentally taxing, and you've got to be on top of your game. I mean, you've got to bring your A game every single day. And if you're not bringing your A game, then take a day off. Take a week off. And when doctors call me and say, Bill, I don't know what's going on. I I'm just not being productive. I say, when's the last time you had a vacation? And I can't remember. I said, well, take next week off. You're not busy anyway. And... Uh, <laughs> Why sit there in the office and hope a patient shows up? Why sit there and hope a patient shows up? You know, there have been years 
when I was practicing that I would get in 60 days skiing. And, and people say, well, how in the world do you do that? I said, well, that's first. And I'll practice around it. But when I work, I'm going to work. So I'm going to put systems in place to allow me to be highly productive when I'm there. So anyway, I, the, it's been fun for me, Evelyn. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's amazing. Like, like I said, with, with my practice, the previous practice that, that you worked with me uh, with. It, 20 years ago, maybe. 15 was, years ago? It, was, it, was, um, <laughs> it wasn't that long. We will, but I, I for, retract what I said. It wasn't that. Evelyn's not that old. <laughs> it, was, it was probably 2009. Was oh, it? was it that recent? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was about 2009, yeah. but it just made a, a, a marked difference. And I continuously sing your praises. I'm in a lot of the, the message groups, and I've had some people ask about, should I use this person or this person? Uh, yours was one, a, a recent uh, inquiry, and I put my testimonial on there because I, I forever see uh, you and, and Carolyn's uh, praises. I mean, I just think the world of you and oh, thank you. my practice changed. I, I got better team members. Uh, they were on board. The salary uh, team members, which is a concept that you introduced. Yeah. You attract people. Well, actually, I have to collect that a little bit. We don't call it salary anymore just because of HR okay. rules. We yeah, call it a guaranteed number of hours per pay period. That's true. I'm sorry. So in other words, they get paid straight through. Our intent, and I have to explain that just a little bit. You see, our intent was to give the team a reward for being efficient. Mm -hmm. When we pay people by the hour, there is no reward to be efficient. The reward is to be inefficient. So we want to pay them straight through, and we want to pay them straight through all the vacations as well, because you know these ladies, uh, and we have a few men in that pos these positions, but they can't afford to take a week off every month. I mean, they, they couldn't put beans on the table for their family, so, so we have to pay them straight through. I want our team members to be the best paid in town. Just like this doctor I just referred to, where they've got 320 to spend on four people. They're making 80,000 average a piece, and they're working 120 patient days a year. Well, we pay straight through, you see, but it's, it's guaranteed number of hours per pay period, and you're still required to keep track of hours and overtime and all that. Stuff. That is exactly right. But it's a fantastic concept because now, you see, in the old model, when they're getting paid by the hour, in hygiene, let's say we diagnose single crown. Well, most of our offices today, they'll do that today. Why put it off till next week? You're here, I'm here, let's get it done. Mm -hmm. And they look for ways to make it happen because the incentive is to make it happen. Whereas in the old model, the incentive was to put it off until next, next week, guarantees me pay next week. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. And they'll keep you there a little bit later at the end of the day, there's no incentive to end on time. If we have to. Eat those out. Well, we try and get out on, we, we make it a point to get out on time. Exactly. But, and with but, the but it's not the, it, we eliminate the clock watching so much. I mean. Exactly. That's exactly right. That you is, see the difference, with, it's the difference between a team and a staff. As you know, a staff's an infection. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and I never refer to my team as such. I never have. All right. Well, it's been fun. It has, it has. I, I thank you so much. Um, you must tell Carolyn I said hello. Oh, I will. Bye. Well, I, I should tell you, that, as you know, Carolyn writes all the books that we publish, and uh, we have a new one coming out. It just went to the printer this last week, and it's the one you talked about, the seven principles of, uh, seven principles, seven habits. I, we get, not seven habits, seven principles of highly successful dentist, I believe. And, you know, we interview various dentists and, and the things they do to become, and they can get that on our website, blatchford.com, or on Amazon. Okay, and I will put a note of the new book on the um, show, show notes as well. Excellent. And also, this is one of Dr. Blatchford's books. Is oh, that's the first one we did. No, that's the second one. And I am a featured doctor in there. You're in it. I know. <laughs> You're in it. I am. So, yes, I will definitely put the, the new book, which is The Seven Principles of Highly Profitable Dentists. Yes. Uh, uh, in the show notes, and if someone wanted to get in touch with you, Dr. Blatchford, how would they do that? Uh, just BlatchfordSolutions.com okay. Blatchford. or info at Blatchford, Bill at Blatchford.com. Any of those will get a hold of me. Okay. I prefer Blatchford.com because that kind of goes through our system. Okay. It, they're much more likely to get an answer if they okay. go through the Blatchford. Okay, well, I will um, definitely put that in the show notes as well. Once again, uh, thank you for being on the show. I think the world of you, I say it all the time. I credit you two for my rock star uh, husband finding me. You know, my husband was a former fighter pilot. You I remember that, yes. The checklist. What is this? 
Does, does uh, are we are okay? Yeah, so I, I, I know you talked about the, you used to talk about a lot about the checklist with pilots, and it's so true. So, well, you um, know, I flew for 44 years. <laughs> exactly, I remember that. And That's something else, know. which is an interesting fact, your, I think it was your mother made me a birdhouse. Oh, remember? yes, my mom and dad made those birdhouses. We, we bird actually house. have, we hire, my mom and dad are no longer with us, and we do hire people now uh, that are need the money sort of thing to make those birdhouses but we still send them out so oh that, that was such a great gift sorry yeah. for your loss but i, I really did appreciate oh, they, they had they had a great life they yes. both died at 92 oh, and wow. chronologically they were three weeks apart okay okay well that's that's a, a blessing in many yeah. years and and the birdhouse is beautiful so yeah. uh, once again thank you for being on the show i tell carolyn i said hello and uh, this concludes another episode of the Efficient Practice Podcast. Uh, if you would, please subscribe to the show, rate and review. Uh, and if you have not joined our uh, Facebook group, it's called the Efficiency Now Network. There are several experts in the group from uh, different fields and businesses, uh, experts like Dr. Bill Blashford in the group. Uh, and it's a lot of us that are in there and we're sharing and we're networking and we're working together so we can have uh, better businesses. I am Dr. Evelyn Samuels signing off and I will see you the next time. Thanks again, Dr. Blashford. Thank you. And until next time, we'll see you then. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.